Hey coach, welcome to our YouTube channel. We're super excited you've decided to join us. Um, let me know how we can help. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, and if you're looking for more resources, you're looking for a mentor, you're looking um, for someone to help you through this journey of basketball coaching, check out teachhoops.com. It'll be up below or down below in the, in the show notes or up above. Um, check it out. It's a great resource, and I think it will make you a better coach. Go check it out. 14-day free trial. All right. Episode two of Coach Unplugged High School Hoops. Um, and this one I'm pretty excited about. So we're going to try to keep this under an hour, but yeah, <laughs> you know, coach and I have a lot of things. So go ahead, coach, throw the question out there. And then, uh, I'm going to grab all my notes here while you do that. <laughs> uh, I've been looking forward all week to, uh, talking about this question. It's something that I've had experience with it for a long period of time as a high school coach and made a lot of, uh, bad decisions. And we can talk about, um, why I made those bad decisions and how you guys can learn from listening to our podcast of making a better decision. I think that's obviously the goal of, um, coach unplugged is, is to support coaches and especially high school coaches listening to this about that. Uh, but the topic is, which Steve seems pretty excited about <laughs> is how do you select an offense for the upcoming season? All right. <laughs> yeah. So let, let me, I'm going to just throw out what I thought about my notes and then I'll, we'll have you jump in. So sounds I think, great. I think there's, I think first of all, there's two types of offenses. Um, there are, or first of all, there's two types of coaches. I think there's the system coach and the non-system coach. Okay. So I used to be a system coach early in my career. We ran flex or swing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I've become hopefully a non-system coach. Um, so let me, let me explain the differences between them. A system coach, especially at the high school level, um, Bo Ryan would be a prime example of assistant coach at the division one collegiate level. He ran the swing, he ran man offense. That's what he did. He did it really well. Um, and that's all he did. He recruited players to do that. Um, and that's the, that's the sole thing he did. He got really good at it. They broke it down. Yeah, I think they were in a plat when he was at UW Platteville, they ran a little diamond press too, but so he would, be, he would be considered a system coach. A non-system coach would say, okay, um, thinking about last week's episode, he would <laughs> take a look at his players and go, ooh, we can't dribble, so I can't run the dribble drive. Or we don't have a post, I'm not going to run the triangle offense. Um, so hopefully I think uh, that I, you know, I, we haven't run flex in probably, I don't know, five, six, seven, maybe more than that years. I don't even remember last time we ran it. Um, now I take, kind of take a look at the kind of players we have um, so I, I would say that I would fall under that non, non system coach. Okay. Then underneath that, <laughs> um, I think you basically have different types of offenses. Um, you have the motion offense or the free form offense, the one that kind of gives the kids all sorts of fr freedom. You have a continuity offense, which is like swing, like flex, like the triangle, um, you know, if you go back to the free form one, it might be like read and react, something that there's specific rules, but there's not dribble drive would probably be under free form uh, motion offense would. Then there's two types of subcategories. There's the um, the called play offense, which is you call play, um, you know, uh, UCLA cuts, all those kind of things. So you're calling the coach is calling a lot more of those kind of things. Then I would I under that, I would put probably a quick hitter offense. Um, that's we we run we run a free form offense with quick hitters. Um, a quick hitter is something that can get you a score, uh, maybe a double screen for a post or something like that. And then um, some coaches have a specific zone offense that will work against specific zones. Um, other coaches will use their um, entire offensive system. So I think that's the encompassing of the things that we got to talk about. How do you feel about that, coach? Did I miss anything? Um, no, I, I just um, – I, I said offense is ever-changing when I thought about it. Um, I also thought about it's, – it's, I think it's important to have a staple offense that your team can rely on at all times. Um, it may change as you go further, but to always have that in, in, in the back that you're, you're good at really something. Right. Um, not constantly be changing it, um, which I guess in a sense you could have a system. I'm a true believer, and I guess this is the idea of having a coach unplugged is seeing different perspectives – I think you should have a blend of all three. Of I all think three it's nice of a continuity of a uh, 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 yeah, and then have some sets. Okay, okay. And that continuity often can be just a simple stable offense that even your youth program has run, or you can use that in the back burner. Yep. Um, I 
that's just an idea. I've seen a lot of coaches do it and have a lot of success with it. Um, for me, like my, my continuity offense that I would constantly keep in the back burner is my ball screen continuity. It's yep. very simple. It yep. doesn't take very long to teach. And uh, it's something that you can utilize at all times. So okay. sometimes continuity can be very simple, but it could be a staple that you can get you can uh, turn it back to. Yep. You know, so I would tell, I would tell coaches that, yeah, then mine, mine is tends to be the, I, mine is a um, hybrid of the read and react. Right. Um, so that's your staple offense. That's my staple. So I, what I would refer to this is if you're building a house, that's basically your basement. That's your foundation. And right. when the boys get stressed or the girls get stressed, you can always go back. <laughs> the tornado's coming. You go to the basement, right. you know, it's your right. staple. It's your consistent, you know, you can do it. You, they've run it since sixth grade. So yes, I agree. I th I, I would agree that um, I would agree that a continuity um, or a motion off or something like that or or screen offense like you or re right I mean, tons of again that that can be a different that can be a whole different episode about talking about it really can. But I, I also say that your players, no matter what you do, have to be able to grind. They have to yeah. execute, and they just got to be able to play. You right. know, at different moments in the game, they got to be able to do those three things. So having some variety makes that easier for them to do that. It does. Okay, so so the first one you said was continuity, which I would agree. What was the second yeah. one? You saying you're you uh, have... I said like a, a blend of all, like a, a blend. I know like a, a motion or a read to react. I think you got to okay. have something where it's where where you, it's very unpredictable, and okay. you can do things based off of it. And then I think you got to have some sets or some quick hitters. Right. Um, I think, and I think, I think the those sets are really and the important. quick hitters come into play more, even more so for situational stuff. Like, absolutely, yeah, it's a clock situation, it's a timeout situation, it's the beginning of the second half situation, it's the beginning of a quarter for some of you. Um, I think that's where it's like, oh, we need a score, we need a post touch, we need we need our best player to get the ball. Um, so yeah, so so when when the initial question was what again, what what kind of offense? Yeah. Okay, so how, how would we answer that? So I think we may – I mean, you're saying you, – your, your argument is we should have a little bit of everything. Yeah, but I also think it has to fit on to what you, um, what you believe in, too, as a coach. And we'll talk about this later in a couple uh, podcasts later on is uh, uh, being authentic. Right. You can only coach what you really know and what you, what you believe in. And what you feel comfortable um, with, yes. What you feel comfortable with. And so um, just because you may think it's, it's really good, but are you really comfortable in coaching it right. um, is, is a huge thing as well. And you have to believe in, the, in that system. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I believe that some of the things that, and some of the things I've used, I, I really think that I believed in them. And some of them I just picked up because I thought they were the right thing to use or there was the fad and so forth. And guess what? It, it didn't work out as well. And right. I think you don't have, have the shiny it. object. Don't have the shiny object problem is what I right. read. A lot of the coaches It's like, don't have the, Oh, that looks good. Ooh, that let's try that. Ooh, let's but try I think that. that's one of the reasons why you designed teach hoops.com. We yeah. talked about it years ago yep. is that there's yep. so many shiny objects out, yeah. out there yes. to, to say, all right. Oh my gosh. When you're co when you get that magazine from championship productions right. and there's a thousands of thousands of DVDs and you right. just want to grab all of it right. because it's, 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 it's not really it's too much you can't do it's it too much it, it, it's more it's more like okay i think i think that our right. team is good at this from last week right i think that we're gonna try this and then we're gonna get really good at it right okay um so that's the issue i think as a coach out there it's like don't get the shiny object don't get the 85 different things you might make a wrong decision it, it, i i i, I kind of talk about in terms of businesses to mo anybody that's been successful in a business or been an entrepreneur has failed 50,000 times. You might try something. I, and I've done it. You might try and it doesn't work. <laughs> you know what? Then you get rid of it and then you try something else, but you can't, you, you, you gotta, you gotta put the effort and the time and that we're going to try this. We're going to sell this. And then, you know, right. you know, if you get a hit over the head 85 times, you stop. What about zone? What about zones? What happens if I throw a one, three, one at you or a match up three, two, or those kind of things? What do you do? Um, I've actually had more success in the, in the, in the, at the college level running quick hitters. Okay. Um, I, um, and, uh, then having two base continuity offenses against an odd front and an even front. So all I had is I would always have a, uh, have an even front zone offense that I think would utilize yep. our strengths. 
and then I'd have an odd front, and then I'd have a couple quick hitters, and I'd make adjustments based on the zone. And I think that's really good. I think the key to the zone is you got to you got to reiterate to the boys or girls that you got it's about ball movement. It's about making the right. zone make the zone move. Zones don't like the move. Um, right. And that and then, the weaknesses yeah. of yep, within yep, it, yep, and yep. learning how to position yourself. You know, I think a lot of times we can position ourselves and pin the zone. I right. think it's huge how to pin the zone and utilizing what you have. But if we try to make, you know, have five or six different zone offense and overcomplicate things, it just becomes too much. It does. You know, one, thing that, one thing I learned that was really interesting this year that we did in college last year is we built a lot of our quick hitters from man to man and ran them against zones. Right. We were able to take some of the same things we were doing. And, and we could run it against, and it just made it made life so much easier. You know, we didn't ha- we could om- we could actually. And we'll talk about this probably in a couple a couple weeks or a month or so about defense. Right. But you can focus more on how can you make your defense more complex. Right. I guess to me, I look at offense as simple, and I look at defense as something more complex. So it makes it harder for teams to get prepared for you. Right. And the thing is, I I, I think what I think you hit on something there that if it's working against a man, it'll probably work against zone. I always tell, especially young coaches i said if you've got a good out of bounds play use it as your press break right i mean if it works to get the ball and bounce and to score it's definitely going to work when they're pressing so a lot of those correlations is like don't reinvent the wheel if something's working use it you know it it, it, it will build off of it yeah yeah, it will work the way you need to do it but i think it goes back so again hopefully we're building in september here last week we were talking about looking at our teams kind of making that list strengths and weaknesses so now I think as a coach what you got to do is go okay here's what I feel comfortable with here's what I think our strengths are you know I've got five guys that are five seven they can all dribble well then we're going to run the dribble drive how am I going to I'm going to adjust that a little bit to a zone you know I think that's what I think that's where I mean it's it's like the flow chart you sent me that we're going to eventually do I think you got to come up with a flow chart you know it's like okay here's my team we're good at this. If we're good at this, we should run this. If we're good at this, we're so I haven't gotten that yet. You know, I want to stay married. Um, right. There's a good. I think there's a good kind of mental flow chart you can do at this point about okay, you know, picking your offense. What are we? We right. we got bigs. We got guards. We got this. And then you know you got to kind of flow f- from that. I think. Uh, you, you know, the other thing is, and I, I guess I, I pin this question at you, being a head of RC coaches, how much continuity do you need within not i'm not talking continuity within uh, offense but within your your jv2 or your jv team and your varsity how much do they have to be simultaneously the same because what your varsity team looks like might be completely different to your jv1 and so it, your jv1 might not be able to, if you don't have a lot of ball handlers they can't rub a dribble yeah. drive so, that, you know, that's why i like the reason that's why i like right that's why, I like right. the, that's why i've moved that's why i've been by i and this is my personal opinion this is why i've moved more toward the read and react because it allows you to maybe set ball screens it allows you not to set ball screens it allows you to get post looks it allows you to not do that i want because i want everyone to kind of be running that as they come through so that when they get to me they understand they're going to pass they're going to cut they're going to screen they're going to do those kind of things and then i can change the pieces of the puzzle at that point a little bit Um, right you know if you're running only dribble drive and then you get a, a group that's horrible dribblers you know you're gonna have a problem um or if you're running some sort of post offense like a triangle offense and you don't have any posts you kind of run into that so i think that's something you got to think about especially if you're running a program that right. you know, here's my shell maybe it's a continuity maybe it's not a continuity but this is what i want kind of everybody to run and then i have to feel like i can i can have spokes off that for different years like I can I can screen I can get I can get the post looks I can get guards looks I can press I can not press all, all those kind of things I think you have to think about long term and to be honest with you you can go down and look at your seventh graders and you can kind of get a sense um you can yeah yeah sure. you're guessing still a little bit but from from someone that's done it 30 years I can I, I can tell you about my fifth grade class I can I mean, right I don't right. know but I can, right. I can, I can it put them in a little bit of a box. Here's what they do really well. Here's what they do. Ooh, this group's right. not quite as good. They got these couple kids. Ooh, this group is good. So I can tell, to be honest with you, I can tell you all the way down to fifth or sixth grade in my program. Now things change absolutely. Um, you know, my son's class is a is a is a is a prime example of someone that they've pivoted. You know, they they were always kind of good, but they weren't. I think they've gotten better as they've kind of moved up. 
and they've gotten some pieces and kids have grown and kids have learned to shoot the ball and things like that. So things change, but I think it hasn't been, they haven't gone from a 70, they haven't gone from a, you know, a 70 to a 95. They've gone from an 80 to a 90 kind of thing. Right. Um, so that, I think that kind of adjustment as a program leader, you can look at for sure. Um, but it's not easy. And, and it goes back to what I was saying before. You're going to make some mistakes with this. Quick hitters. If I had a nickel for every quick hitter I've tried, I'd be retired on a beach somewhere right now. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just the way it is. But I think it's really important to take the time to select a really good offense that you can fall, fall back on to throughout the season. Yep. And that you can break down into little pieces. I was listening to right. something about becoming an expert and, you know, the Ma- Malcolm Gladwell thing. Is the 10,000 hour thing is, but they, they basically said that people that get good at things like that, they are good at the minute stuff. Steph Curry is good at the minute stuff. Has he put the hours in? Yes. The 10,000 hours was average to become a, a, a world renowned pianist. You got to put in 25,000 right. hours to become like this, this, this kid that becomes like a, there's a, like a number game you can play. It takes 400 hours. A 10,000 is the average, but all of them get really good at specific skills. So if you're thinking of dribble drive, you better have them dribbling. <laughs> right. Know? And I, I, the last thing I wrote down is that your, your breakdown drills should reflect your offense and what you're doing. Yes. And, you yes. know, again, yes. talk about this. We we're talking about that this giant, <laughs> what was it, the light we were talking about early on in the show about, like, there's so much out there and you choose all these different drills. But if they don't connect to each other, Doesn't they're matter. not going to build. They're not going to build off of it. Right. So um you know in regards to you know when we ran the ball screen offense all our breakdown drills were all reading and doing things off the ball screen you know right. or when i ran swing man i did every breakdown drill that i could do where they could be able to read off of that um to, to do a dump down in the post whatever it was how to seal everything right. has to connect to it right. i think a big mistake that coaches make is they select an offense and then they grab all these different drills that have no connection within their offense yeah and you got to sit down you got to take a saturday you got to go to starbucks you got to get away from the distractions you got to yep. close all your browser tabs you got to do all that kind of stuff and you have to say to yourself okay i'm i'm going to work on my offense come up with some drills i mean i i can help you but i'm just saying this is what i tell everybody is like you got to come up with, you're gonna you're as good at coming up specific things for you i'm telling you right now we're, we weren't very good at screening next last year we're gonna do a lot of screening stuff this year <laughs> um you know i watched the brookfield game we're gonna screen we're gonna we're gonna screen and if you don't screen you ain't gonna play um <laughs> so that, but, that, but that's what I've been working on. It's like, okay, how can I break this down into a small little piece so that when we put it in the bigger one that they go find a body, that they, you know, they're making contact, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think, that's, I think that's as important as picking your offense is the, the minute, small, how are you going to teach it thing. And if, if you're not able to do that, then it's definitely not an offense that you should be touching because you're not – if you can't create breakdown drills on your own – in selecting an offense, especially if you're a JV, even a freshman coach or a varsity coach at this point in your career as a coach, then it's not an offense that you're familiar with and it's going to take more time. So yep. if you're going to start getting really good at learning the dribble drive, you shouldn't be doing that in September. You should have already been thought about doing that in March and being a, yep. a, you know, a connoisseur of that for a long yep. time. Yep. You so know, maybe you grew you up playing. Only- yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. But like, like I said, if you, if you, like for me, any day I can teach a motion offense because uh, my high school coach, uh, Slinger Al Sheen, who just retired, we were a motion guy. Man, I could teach motion and do breakdown drills forever because I know it, you know? Right. right. Um, and, you know, it, it's all about what you know and what you can build off of it. Yep. So I, and, 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 and especially if you're a younger coach, if you're a youth coach, if you're a dad, if you're a freshman coach and you ran swing and you feel comfortable with it, run it. Unless, unless your head, unless someone above you is telling you not to, then run it because you'll be able to do, like you said, better breakdown drills, teach the kids. Then you can spend the time to go, Oh, I think we should really be running read and react. I really think we should be running dribble drive. I really think we should be running, you know, the Villanova offense, whatever whatever then 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 that's going to be your homework for six months you know right because it know, takes fine. time to really understand read and react if you've listened to a lot of the shows lately reading read and react is great and i think it's a a, mm-hmm. a great way to teach kids how to play basketball but it's also the coach has got to take time to how to teach that well, i've been you know, doing it for two years and i'm horrible at it still i mean i'm still right i mean I'm, i mean i'm not i i could go in and give you swing flex drills forever 
but ever but, right yeah but you know that part of that's the growth part of my the growth that i'm trying to do but it's also what's best for the boys and that's right. what i'm trying to do yeah absolutely um, any, all right anything else on that coach no, I just think the importance of just reminding uh, all coaches out there, it's, it's about comfort level and choosing something that's going to work best for you, yep. for you can be the best coach you can be, but also that your players can be and, um, and, and stick to those two, two key things. And I think you'll be fine when yep. selecting an stick offer. Stick to your guns, stick to your guns, yep. stick to your guns, and you'll be fine. Absolutely. All right, good. All right, till next week, coach. Bye. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, coach, hope you liked that video. Um, if you're looking for more videos like that, looking for vast resources, things that will help you become a better coach, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Great resources, 14-day free trial, one-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, you name it, it's there. Go check it out.